because there is this e to the minus alpha z term, uh, the wave diminishes as it propagates deeper into the wood. As a result, this alpha value is called the attenuation constant. Let's see what alpha is for the wood. Table 7-1 in the Uli Blue Book is copied here, and it summarizes several parameters corresponding to electromagnetic waves in different materials. What's helpful about this table is that it includes approximations that you can use to save yourself some time and effort. For example, to calculate alpha, we could use the full expressions in any media, and here's alpha in this column, but since we know the wood is a low-loss dielectric, we can use the much simpler expression for alpha in this low-loss medium column. So we could use this one right here. Plugging in the values we have for wood for sigma, mu, and epsilon, for alpha, which is sigma over 2 mu over epsilon, we would get 10 to the minus 15 over 2 square root of 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 over 2 times 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12. And evaluating this, we get 1.3 times 10 to the minus 13. This means that as the wave propagates in the wood, the amplitude of the electric field will decrease very, very slowly since we have that e to the minus alpha z term, and we just calculated alpha. But wait a minute. If the amplitude reduces in a very low loss dielectric like wood, we see it's reducing here with space, then what about for a metal, which is a good conductor? The outer body of the airplane which they call the skin, is typically made of aluminum, and it is typically only about 3 millimeters thick. Could the amplitude of the electromagnetic wave also reduce as it propagates through the aluminum outer body of the airplane? Since the thickness of the outer body is so thin, just 3 millimeters, would the EMP propagate right through it? If it does, it could directly damage the electronics, like the EMP from the Starfish Prime experiment caused satellites to fail and knocked out streetlights. Or maybe the electromagnetic wave attenuates so quickly in the aluminum outer body of the airplane and we don't need to worry about it. Let's start investigating this. Let's say the relative permittivity of the aluminum is 1 and the effective conductivity of the aluminum is 3.77 times 10 to the seventh Siemens per meter. In this case, since aluminum is a metal, the effective conductivity is probably almost all due to the con conduction current. Let's consider an electromagnetic wave at 1 megahertz at first. Then we can calculate epsilon double um, prime over epsilon prime which is sigma over omega epsilon, and we can plug in our values, and we get 6.8 times 10 to the 11th. So it's clearly a good conductor. Even if we change the frequency to 300 megahertz, the ratio would still be very large, and the aluminum would be a good conductor. Since aluminum is a good conductor, then in table 7-1, we can use the values in the good conductor column. If you look at the any medium column for alpha and beta, we can see that what, when you have a good conductor, what happens is this term is very large. So this term starts to dominate and becomes much, much larger than 1. So then the square and the square root, we can just ignore this term altogether and simplify that. And once we simplify everything, we wind up with square root of pi f mu sigma for both alpha and beta. So if you have an expression where alpha is equal to beta, it's a signal to you that it is a good conductor material. So for aluminum and considering a electromagnetic wave propagation at 1 megahertz, we can calculate alpha is equal to beta, and if you plug in all our values, we're going to get 12,200 nippers per meter, and at 
so this is at 1 megahertz, this is at 300 megahertz, we're going to get alpha is equal to beta is 211,300 meters per meter. Then the general form of the electric field in this plane wave propagating in the aluminum would be E, this function of Z and T, is X hat E X naught E to the minus alpha Z. So I'm going to go ahead and just put in the values we calculate. So here's minus alpha, so I'll put in minus 12,200 um, z and cosine omega t minus 12,200 z. So this is at 1 megahertz. Let's compare the 3 millimeter thickness of the aluminum skin of the airplane to the attenuation rate of the electromagnetic wave in the aluminum. The amplitude of the electric field decays according to this e to the minus alpha z term. We need a benchmark that we can use to compare how far the wave propagates into the aluminum. Typically what is done in this case is that we can define a depth at which the electric field amplitude has dropped by a factor of e to the minus 1 which is also equal to 0 0.37 or 37% compared to the amplitude at z equals 0. The depth at which the amplitude has fallen by 37% is called the skin depth. The skin depth occurs when the exponential, this e to the minus alpha, alpha z, equals e to the minus 1, and that happens when uh, z is equal to 1 over alpha. If you plug in that, you get alpha times 1 over alpha, you get e to the minus 1. So we define this as, this is the skin depth, the symbol we're going to use for skin depth, that is equal to 1 over alpha. What do you calculate for the skin depth for the aluminum? And how does it compare to the 3 millimeter thickness of the aluminum skin of the airplane?